time value of money. I can't say enough about the time value of money. It's a wonderful tool. It is integral to your long-term financial planning. Uh, my problem is financial people have elevated to a certain level of complexity and lay people don't use it, don't understand it, don't want to know. So what I want to do is, uh, I guess, show lay people how to use it, how simple it is. Uh, so most of you may be f somewhat familiar with it, may be recalling uh, using one of these, maybe in college, a financial calculator has a special dedicated row of keys, future value, payment, interest, etc. Uh, this is very intimidating. Uh, it also is a real pain in the butt when you're working through a problem. If you happen to make a keystroke error, you have to repeat everything all over again. There's very low visibility. It's all very, very, very manual. So it's still interesting to learn how to use a financial calculator, but that's like Grace Hopper uh, building a computer. Uh, there's far more ways to be productive. Uh, the best way to really start using the time value of money to visualize your data, to be able to troubleshoot uh, your issues is by using Excel. All right, so here we are in Excel. I'm pretty certain you can use any spreadsheet software, but I'm using Excel here. Uh, so these are your five keys on a financial calculator, the dedicated keys. Uh, for example, the N, uh, which would calculate the number of periods. The function in Excel is NPER. I have that in parentheses. Uh, the interest is uh, much more complicated. I'm gonna go over that in a different video. And then these three, the function or this, the Excel functions are the same as the key. Keys are labeled, which is present value, uh, payment, and future value. All right, so the best way to get into this is to uh, use a sample problem. And I have one here. Uh, the situation would be you have a four-year-old daughter. She's going to enter college in 14 years. Uh, you've decided that she'll have a, uh, you want to create an account for her to give her a $500 a month allowance uh, while she's in college for four years. Uh, and you found an account that pays 6% annual interest compounded monthly. So you want to know how much should you save up to create that account. So now you plug in your five data points just like you would if you were using a financial calculator only you get to use cell references and visualize them instead of just punching them in in one long pr uh, program on your calculator all right so the periods used in the number the n in the interest period have to be the same so if you have years in one and months in the other it won't work so you have to you have to make them the same. It doesn't have to be in years or months. It can be in either, as long as they're all the same. So for number of periods, we're, we're using monthly calculations here. Uh, there's 12 months in a year times four years. Uh, for interest, there's 6% interest divided by 12 months. And the present value is what we're trying to figure out. The payment amount would be negative 500 because we're going to uh, uh, pay out of the account uh, f to our for our daughter's allowance, and in no matter what kind of calculation you're calculating, one of these three must be negative. Uh, and future value is zero. We want to draw down the account to nothing. All right, so we have the data that we need to calculate the formula. So now we use the PV formula, and Excel just walks you through it. So here we go. Uh, the rate comma, number of periods, reference that cell, uh, payment, reference that cell, and future value. And you could do a comma and enter the type, or you don't really need to worry about the type when they're in the, uh, the brackets there in the formula, you can skip them and it'll still work or give you an answer. So that is the number that we need our account to reach in order to make the payments we need for our daughter's uh, college co uh, living expenses. So another interesting thing you could do with the same problem is you have 14 years to come up with that much money. How much would you need to contribute? You could use the same account, which pays the same interest, which is 6%. And we 
want the future value to be this 21,000 number. We're trying to figure out the payment. The present value is zero. Uh, we have to make this negative, so we're going to times by negative one. And the N would be 14 years times 12 months to annualize it. Now you just do the PMT function, and Excel walks you through it. Great. Just plugging in the cell references for each of these. And you would need to put $81.17 every month into an account for 14 years to save up $21,000 to begin drawing $500 out every month for your, your daughter's to costs of college costs. An another wacky calculation you can do is figure out how long it would take you to save up $1 million. So uh, if you're getting, if you're currently getting, let's say you're getting 9.8% uh, interest and then divide that by 12 months in a year uh, and you currently have uh, 150,000 saved up, we're gonna make that negative and we're gonna make this negative and you're currently contributing $800 a month uh, into your investment account. How long will it take you to reach 1 million? So you use the NPER for function, which stands or abbreviates a uh, number of periods, and you just plug in your data. I'm using all cell references, and you get 182 months. So if you use today's formula, function plus the number of months times 30 days in a month approximately you get that date in 2030 uh, it's 2015 for future reference um, and now you can easily see what would happen if you contributed uh, 1000 instead of 800 you can see that you shaved a year off of your, if you uh, earned, um, let's say you earned 11% instead of 9.8, shaved off another year. If you started with 250,000 instead of 150,000, shaved off three more years. So real easy to manipulate and to uh, play around with this and also to make sure you're hitting your long-term financial goals.